Okay, two different questions. Business case for virtualizing your desktops is very straightforward. There's five or six major points in it. One is that um, it's potentially cheaper. Second is that it's potentially portable. Third is it concentrates the administration management of the systems, which is useful. Fourth is that it um, 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 allows portability of your desktop as you move around. Potentially, your virtual desktop is available to you on your iPhone, your, your, uh, uh, your smart device of any type, uh, in the office, at home, etc., etc. Um, physical desktops have those traits, but they have to be configured as such one-on-one. -on -one. Virtual desktop promises to normalize that and make it a standard feature. There are additional features to virtual desktops that I think have even more promise. Those are things like containerization. Virtual desktop is not a bad primitive in which to seek computing science. Uh, uh, people who have infinite resources, like CTOs of software companies, have uh, the ability to pile up many computers around them. And Everyone I know who has that ability does it because it's useful. There's a desktop for simulation. There's a desktop for browsing the web. There's a desktop for uh, doing business applications. In each of these cases, we're killing a fly with a sledgehammer, right? Because the hardware is hardly necessary. A virtual desktop gives us the ability to containerize like that almost ad infinitum. Now there are issues, there are commercial issues, there's licensing fees and a million other things like that, but I expect the industry, as it always has, to work its way through those. Um, the real advantage of virtual desktop is that it's possible to create many standalone, complete, self-contained containers that uh, are not subject to the whims and mercies of the uh, uh, technology weather these days. That if you blow one away because you got a virus, you just recreate it or you restore it from a backup, you keep going. If you're doing one class of, of uh, application and another class potentially conflicts with it, it has its own container and runs separately from it. So there is a, a proliferation of desktops in my vision of the world. And, uh, you know, proliferation of desktops means it's got to be simple. It's got to be simple. VDI for us is an application of, of simply of what we do, which is storage virtualization. But the interesting thing with VDI is that VDI offers us two opportunities for directions we were already moving in. First of them is that VDI really underlines the advantages of software only, and particularly portable software virtualization systems or storage controllers. It has um, the VDI application is definable, it is easy to understand what its requirements will be, and it's open-ended. The open-endedness of the architecture really allows us to use the self-tuning nature of what we build to create not just scalable networks um, that support the VDI application, but infrastructure that is um, self-tuning. Now that's a big, big deal for us. It is one of the promises of storage area networks from the very beginning of the concept. And the idea here is, is that if storage area networks can be implemented without regard to the physical hardware topologies that, that sit below them, and if the needs, the requirements uh, of those networks are known beforehand, then it becomes a straightforward proposition to make storage simple, <laughs> right? You always know what it costs. You always know how it's configured. You always know where it fits into um, the grand scheme of things. Let me digress for a second here. SANS are a wonderful thing, but SANS in real life are just one more headache for data center guys. 
they have always been so, right? Because they impose their own architecture, their own topology, their own screwy language, their own uh, 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 requirements and uh, performance characteristics. The first task of storage virtualization should be to virtualize itself away, to abstract itself away, to become essentially anonymous. Applications like VDI and like the cloud, which is totally unrelated to VDI, but has one common feature. That common feature is that it combines nodes of the same type in large numbers. So let's see here, computer science. Nodes of the same type in large numbers means an opportunity for pre-configuration. Pre-configuration means <laughs> that you don't have to configure <laughs> and reconfigure first. Second, it doesn't require guesses or hints or policies or any of the rest of the stuff which are the buzzwords of our craft, but which often make life unbearable for the people who are actually forced to implement what we are inventing. Right? So here we have an application, desktop. Even if the independent atomic unit of desktops changes. It goes from being a word processing node to a, a video download node. Still, that is multiplied by the millions, 400 million of them. And deployments of virtual desktops uh, range from the dozens to the hundreds to the thousands. Each time we do something like that, our industry presents us with the opportunity to divide and conquer, because what's being divided and conquered is known. <laughs> so for somebody like us, I mean, this is a dream come true. You want me to run how many machines? <laughs> and they're always going to look the same, <laughs> right? So this is an opportunity that's too good to be missed. This is what we went into the business for. As far as our focus on VDI, we don't sell VDI. Our resellers, our partners, our uh, channel sells VDI, and we support them the same way we support any storage opportunity. But we can run benchmarks. We can indicate our architectures. We can indicate topologies. And we can um, help to eliminate what everybody else seems to me to be trying to do, which is to put themselves in the middle of a VDI debate in which they don't properly belong. <laughs> right? Every paper I read about VDI goes off into some screwy thing about this or that storage device or this or that uh, 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 crazy topology that somebody invented before the segment, which is strategic and important and a genuine advance in not only the the um, uh, uh, commerciality of, of uh, desktop components, but in the science itself, has even gotten going. So from our standpoint, it was inevitable that we were going to get involved in it. Since Datacore is a small company, we got involved in it the same old standard way. We did a benchmark. And the objective of the benchmark was to say, what are the most basic characteristics of a VDI topology and what is a reasonable start at that? Cost, performance, granularity, right? And um, that's sort of the whole story.